What could we do better in schools today? Especially given the incredibly rapid pace of change today, um, where most of our skills that we learn today, many of them are obsoleted five, six, seven years ago. Uh, we have to kind of find a way to actually get our today's, today's kids to embrace change. We have to get them to want to constantly learn new types of things. And the catch to me is somehow we have to find a way to get kids to play with knowledge, to play with finding information, to play with creating knowledge, not always believing that it's already known, but basically being willing to believe that maybe they should be able to create knowledge on the fly by experimenting with things. I think to me that the thing that we don't do much in school is actually look at ways to foster the imagination. Because if you don't have an imagination, you can't even start to be creative. Imagination by itself is not enough. But if you can't have imagination, then you can't really start to create. Then you have to be able to create and reflect. And you have to be able to create, reflect, and share. And I think in that sharing, you start to build a whole new kind of culture because you're beginning to get kind of a peer-based learning. Because from the sharing, you begin to see how other kids are using what you just did. And so I think we're beginning to look at kind of peer-based learning communities where these kids can learn from each other as much as from the mentor amongst the, the authority figure and so on and so forth. So I think part of the challenge we have today is to find new types of learning environments that are almost like back to the future, are almost like the old one-room schoolhouses that we knew about 100, 150 years ago, where you didn't really have the teacher as the authority figure to pass knowledge to you, but we really had the teacher as a mentor, an orchestrator, that could take many kids of many classes, many years, all in the same classroom, and be able to turn that into a learning community where basically somebody a year older than I am would actually spend some time teaching me, but also they would be receiving some knowledge and new wisdom from the person a year older than they are. So I think the whole catch has been to say like, how do we construct an environment which we're kind of constantly learning and teaching each other? Because if you think about it a moment, the best way to learn something is to teach it. So why can't we have kids teach other kids? And how do you construct a context where that's possible? Now the problem is, if all this teaching is just verbiage, how do you know that there's any sense of authority behind what's being said? It's just maybe blind conversation, blind leading the blind. But if you go back to this fundamental notion of tinkering, tinkering says, well, let me take my imagination and build something from it. But now I build something. But is the thing I'm building going to work? And so somehow there's a new notion of ground truth. It's not necessarily what is in the textbooks, but it's has the thing I have built actually worked. And if it hasn't worked, why hasn't it worked? Or if it does work, could it work better? And so there's something very interesting about building concrete things rather than just abstract theories, if you wish, or just decontextualized knowledge, if you wish, where you actually expect this thing to do something, not only for you, but other people around you. So I think we can construct new kinds of learning environments not only are we learning with and from each other, not only are we teaching each other as well, but we're actually understanding that authority to some extent lies in whether or not this thing I've just built is as good as I think it could be, and so on and so forth. So I think that we're kind of moving into quite a different type of world, especially a world in which change is omnipresent, where we're beginning to find ways to bootstrap our own knowledge, tinker with ideas around us, find things that we don't know, ask good questions, and be open to criticism. Criticism from our peers, criticism from our mentors, criticism from the master. So let me just kind of conclude this part by saying I'm very struck, not just by tinkering, but by, let me call it the architectural studio. Where basically in the studio, very interesting thing happens. All work in progress is made public. Now this means that I'm working on a project and the person next to me is working on a project and the person next to me is working on a project over here. And we're all witnessing each other's struggle to engage on our own design projects.
And we're kind of understanding each other's struggle. We understand the processes each of us is going through. So basically, when the product is finally finished, the design called product is finally finished, in comes the master to critique, for example, this person next to me. Well, I overhear what that person is saying because the, pub, the, the, the crits are always public, are always, you know, uh, but now, because I have been a part and parcel of the process constructing this object, this design, suddenly, kind of what this person, what the master is saying to this student has tremendous meaning to me as well. So there's kind of a very interesting distributed learning environment, but is even more interesting than just that. Because one of the things you learn in an architectural studio is you learn to accept criticism. You want your peers to critique you. You want the master to critique you. In today's world, basically students are shriveled when they are critiqued. But in the architectural studio, they learn how to accept that, to appreciate that, and to learn from that. And I think that that is one of the key platforms that you really want for lifelong learning and to be able to embrace change and then be able to learn by experimenting in that changed world, so to speak. Well, I think the technology actually can play out in some very interesting ways. Um, but I notice much of what I just said doesn't really require high-tech technology, uh, especially taking the architectural studio and using that as a metaphor. On the other hand, a lot of today's network technology enables us to build distributed communities of practice. So the example I gave a second ago was working shoulder to shoulder with another student. But maybe now it's only my avatar that's working shoulder to shoulder. And maybe what I now have is infinitely more powerful tools to be able to craft things with, infinitely more powerful tools to mash things up. Tinkering today has really come back big time because the tools that I now use in the digital world not only allow me to create, but allow me to remix, allow me to take fragments of things that are built around me, smash them together uh, in interesting ways. So suddenly I'm in a world which I can borrow somebody else's partial constructions or total constructions, take pieces out of them, put them in mind with credit, uh, and then be able to build new things more rapidly. So perhaps now it's easier than ever to stand on the shoulders of people that came before me. So I start to kind of get this sense of looking around, seeing if I can use what other people have done, tearing some pieces of it apart, repurposing those pieces, adding new pieces to it, constructing something way beyond what the other person ever had in mind, making it possible for me to get a hell of a lot more done in a very short period of time. So I kind of expand my own creative prowess, so to speak, um, and from that, also turn that back into the community. So I think that this network world is basically an open source world where I can put my stamp on something and then pass it back to the community and be able to have that community do, do, things, do things with it. So, you know, another way to look at this is a lot of kids in the prior decade kind of grew up thinking, I am what I wear. I am how I dress. I am what my parents own. I am how much money my family re represents. So my identity came from those material possessions. Just maybe we're entering a world now where my own identity gets defined by what I have created and others have built on and done really neat things with it as well. So suddenly a kind of a sense of an identity starts to get constructed for myself based on what I have done, what I have created, passed on to others, and they have been able to do wondrous things with as well. A whole new sense of kind of reputational capital, social capital is kind of on the move, so to speak. And I think we're gonna find ways that in our network to publics, so to speak, that identity gets constructed by how I participated in these types of network environments, what I've done for the networked environment or the network public, um, how it's been received, how other people have built on it, and so on. This is a different world.